I'm glad the weather is not as cold now. <laughs> I came from Vancouver a few days ago. And uh, I'm part of a uh, national network across Canada to reach all Muslims in Canada. So for the last two or three days, we've been meeting with the leaders in Eastern Canada. And then uh, last night I spent time with a Pakistani family. And today I get to be with Iranians. I started, uh, I became a Christian in 1978. Uh, and then went into uh, missions. First some Bible college studies. And I went to Pakistan and India, working with Muslims there. We found lots of Afghans in Pakistan, this is back in the 1980s. And also Iranians that are running away from Iran. And then I worked in the Philippines. There's five million Muslims in the Philippines. I worked there for a few years. And so God has given me opportunities to go to different countries. Sometimes it's for mobilizing, for challenging people. Let's go and reach Muslims. So sometimes South America, or I've been to Korea and Hong Kong and parts of Europe. So this God, I said, Lord, why is that that I'm going to so many, you know, some dozens of different countries, some I'm living in for a long time, some for a short time. So God used that to stretch me so that I could learn more about loving the whole of the body of Christ. Now I wish that you could meet my wife. She is so wonderful. She's my best friend. We love just spending time together, relaxing in the evening before we go to sleep. And share everything with her from my heart. We're able to even share when we have differences with each other. We can talk and pray those through. And we love doing hospitality. So a couple of days ago, I was talking to her on the phone. And she said, oh, 6.30 in the morning, Dina phoned me. Oh, she woke me up. Oh, I'm sick. Take me to the hospital. So they shook me to the hospital. Dina's from Iraq. The hospital, then the doctor, then the pharmacy, and then she came home five hours later. And when she came home, then Basumi's there. So then she spent some time with Basumi. <laughs> and then one Afghan family came in the afternoon, Jonathan Fahima. And then Malike, she's from uh, East Indian background, Sikh background, but now she loves Jesus. She was there. And then Dina came over with a baby to spend the night. <laughs> so that's like her house. It's like a ministry house. Sometimes people live with us. One guy living with us now, his name Masood, he's from Iran. Another guy named Muhammad. But he changed his name now to Joseph or Yusuf because he loves Jesus. He's from West Africa. 
So one of the, uh, I, sometimes I joke with my wife because she's doing hospitality all the time, people. She said, uh, a few days ago, before I left for this trip, she said, the week before, she said, I prepared 100 meals in this house. <laughs> so, well, you fed a lot of people. So sometimes I joke with her and I tell her, okay, the first three words you learned in Farsi. <laughs> it's about doing hospitality. I told her, I said, you learn first, Bia, Bishi, Bukhar. So you can find food from many different cultures going in and out of our house. Hallelujah. So she said, So I love my wife, and so sometimes I'm helping doing dishes. Honey, you're making food. You have 20 people over for tonight, so I'm going to help you do dishes, set the table. I run around, buy groceries. What do you need? Because you're doing too much work. For two days, she's making food. 20 people in a full sit down meal. <laughs> but in the midst of doing good, loving each other in our family, our marriage, and caring for people that come to our house, some discipleship, just loving people, listening to them, sometimes counseling with them, doing all those things, Satan hates that. And he attacks whatever he can do to stop us from following him and from serving the Lord. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I remember one time we were, <clears throat> when I was in India, we were part of a team, single guys. We were going every day, different marketplaces, two, three, four times a day, preaching the gospel in the open air. Sometimes, wow, the people were so interested. We have 40, 50, maybe sometimes 100 people listening over the loudspeaker, sharing the gospel. We have gospel tracts and literature we're giving out to the people. And so sometimes they're coming up, they're so interested. They're so interested. God's Holy Spirit is drawing them and their hearts are open. They come up and they're asking, yes, we want that. Even they're throwing them just the, the price of a cup of chai. They're throwing the money into the back of the cup. I want that. I want that. We're selling just very cheaply. It's like less than the cost of production. And uh, sometimes we had opposition. And some people would get all mad. And what you can see, Satan is influencing their hearts, their minds, their emotions. They're resisting that. And hatred rises up from the enemy. So they tear the literature up. They throw stone into our truck. They run us out of the village. Has anybody here been to Pakistan? There's no need to go. I'm just wondering if any of you have been there. Well, up in the north is all the Himalayas are coming from the north part of Pakistan. And there's 20 different language groups. They're all Muslim. So we were young guys, and you know, we could hike up there 6,000, 8,000, 10,000 feet elevation, like 3,000 meters, and we would hike up into these villages and share the top gospel with them, share our testimony, give them scripture. And 
دهات ها برسید تا بتونیم این کلام خدا رو به این اشخاصی که اونجا بودن برسید And sometimes they're so interested, they listen, we're drinking chai together, and sitting around in the village, in the middle of the village with the men, and they're so interested, they're asking questions. Then the next village, sometimes they get mad at us, and they run us out of the village. <laughs> Leave now. There is one area when I was in the Philippines, we were reaching out to Muslims. There is one area that is probably almost 100% Muslims living in this area, south of Manila. There's probably 12,000 Muslims or more living in this area, all Filipino Muslims. And we wanted to show the Jesus film in the open air. At night time, it gets dark out against the wall of the building. So we would go out and tell the people, oh, we're going to, sh we're setting this up, we're telling them, yeah, we're going to show a film, it gets getting dark, and we're going to show a film, you can come and watch, it's free. And uh, so we're starting to show the film. And the people, probably between 50 and 100 Muslims, are sitting and standing there and they're watching the Jesus film. And then some religious leaders come. Maybe we're not even halfway through. And they come up and they say, no, you, you cannot show this here. You have to stop now. So I'm praying. And I want the people to watch as long as I can get them to watch. So I tell them, I, we got permission. We went to the leader of this community, this area. We asked permission. They got permission. They said, yes, you can show that. So we're... We're being doing what the leader told us we can do. So they try to argue with us, and I'm standing here, I'm listening to them, I'm saying, I'm sorry, we have permission, we are allowed to do this. Finally, they get so upset. They step up and start yelling at the people, tell them, leave this place right now. All the people are afraid, we sound they run away. <laughs> and we feel sad, we just have to stop the projector and just uh, uh, we just have to pack up and go. But in another Muslim community, further south from Manila, the Imam comes out, we're showing the Jesus film, and again at night time in the open air. And this is what And this is uh, in the time that he used the reel, the reel, so we change reels. We have to put the second one. So when they're doing that, then someone goes up front and says, we're just changing the reel, and by the way, we have the stories about Isa, you can come afterwards and get that, very inexpensive. We have this old van, we put a table there, and so we share a little bit, and then the movie starts again, and the imam is standing there. So I like to go up and stand next to the Imam. And he's watching and all of our team is standing there, maybe 50 people are watching, and they're standing there and after the movie is over they say, oh, what did you think about that? And so <clears throat> the Imam invited us into his study, he watched the whole thing. He invited us into, our home, into his home, we sat down, we had some chai, we started asking questions, we shared testimony with him. We're ready to start Bible study with him. 
و وقتی در اون دورنی امامی که اونجا بود صحبت همه فیلم و دیدش و بعد از اون ما رو به خونش دعوت کرد که به شایی بخواید و بعد شروع که به سوال کردن و ما آماده شده بودیم که یه مطالق که مقدس رو باها شروع کنیم Last summer we did an outreach to Muslims in Vancouver. And so one of the things we did was go to a mosque visit. And it was uh, Ahmadiyya. So Masood is with us. Maybe 35 people, all the people were training them how to do evangelism and outreach. و محصول یکی از اینهایی که ایرانی هست با ما بود و بودم ما 35 نفر بودیم که این همه آموزش دیدیم که چطور بتونیم این کار رو از جان بزنیم So Masood is with us and Ahmad Adina are coming and Adil and Layla, they're Kuwaiti he was, you know, Paka Muslim and then uh, he became Christian و محصول و کسایی دیگه دینا و احمد و دینا بودن که احمدی که چقدر ریش داشت بسید <laughs> so, uh, so we're there, and all these young people, some of them, you know, Caucasian, just high school students, uh, they're going into the mosque. And the one guy stands up and he says, I'm the Ahmadiyya missionary, I'm here to convert all of Canada. And my son is there, he's 13, you know, he's watching. You know, and everybody's asking him so many questions. Maybe two or three other Ahmadiyya leaders from the mosque are there. And two hours asking them questions and questions. And, he, and, and even those who are used to be Muslim, now Christian on our team, asking questions. Asif Mal from Pakistan, he's also there. And the guy was... I think he's sweating, and Tristan said his lower lip was just quivering like he couldn't ask all the questions. <laughs> so the goal is, is not to fight with them, but to ask questions to make them think. از بنابراین هدف این نبود که با اونا جنگ بکنیم بلکه از اونا سآل بکنیم که اونا بتونن فکر بکنن And at the end of that time we hugged them, we loved them, they had some snacks for us and a few days later four men Asif Mal, he's Pakistani Abel, uh, Ray and another guy they went back to visit that Ahmadiyya missionary و ما در اونجا بعد از اون که پیام خدا رو بیرسودیم هم دیگه رو بلند کردیم با هم دیگه رو میبوسیدیم و چهار تا از اونا دوباره برگشتن به اون بسیونر احمدی های اونجا بودم And he sat down with him in two hours more discussion with this Ahmadi missionary and one or two other leaders هم دو دو ساعت با این بسیونر احمدی های و این سه دیگه شد کردم به صحبت کردم And at the end of that time they were saying questions like, how do you know if your sins are forgiven? How can you know for sure if you are going to heaven? And they know that in Islam, in the Quran, it doesn't teach that. Mm -hmm. So they're saying, well, does the Bible teach that? And they say, yes, it does. So they opened up the Bible, they held it there, you can read right here. Jesus is hanging on the cross. And hanging next to him on the next cross was who? No, who was it? Robert. The thief. The thief. Farsi chiming? Dos. Okay. So he's <laughs> hanging there and he turns to Jesus and what does he say? Jesus, remember me. When you come into your kingdom. And then they told the Ahmadiyya missionary, do you see what Jesus says to him? What did he say? Today you will be with me in paradise. Wow. You're going to die today and you will be with me in paradise. Wow. And so the Ahmadiyya missionary, then last Christmas, we did a Christmas outreach party. Maybe 
80, 80 Muslims or more were coming to our Christmas party. And three from the Ahmadiyya Mosque, they came to that also. I went over, I sat with them. <laughs> so they're asking more questions. They're saying, like, the Christian life. And I said, you know, the Christian life is kind of like spiritual hajj. Hmm, nice. You don't have to go to a certain place. You don't have to go to Mecca, you don't have to go to Mashad. You don't have to go to any other place. But you can know the Lord our God. You can walk with Him day by day. You can experience the Holy Spirit in your life. And you know that you are saved. So let's look a little bit at the scripture, uh, just a few verses to talk about the, the tactics, the way in which Satan tries to attack us. He tries to use the people who are not Christians to manipulate their minds. So let's look at a few scriptures about this. Romans, Romans 7, 5. There's the original languages from the Bible. The Old Testament um, was uh, Hebrew. And the New Testament was originally in Greek. You probably all know that, right? Yes. Okay. Did you know that they call Hebrew a Semitic language? No. Arabic also is a Semitic language. You know where that word comes from? Do you remember Noah? He had three sons. One was Shem. And the languages that came from Shem are Semitic languages. Hebrew and Arabic are cousins. <laughs> so we see that uh, in Romans uh, chapter 7 verse 5, and uh, I'll just, I'll, can I read English? Sure. Okay. Romans chapter 7, verse 5 says, For when we were controlled by the sinful nature, the sinful passions aroused by the law were at work in our bodies, so that we bore fruit for death. So this, this part of the verse where it says uh, control but the simple passions we were at work in our bodies. So the simple passions were at work in our bodies. That word work is a word for power. <laughs> So in the Bible, there's different words. In the New Testament, there's different words for power. If I have a battery, and I'm just holding it in my hand, there's power in the battery. Greek word is dunamis, actually. Power in the battery. But when I connect it to something and I turn on the switch, then the green light comes on and the power is coming out of the battery. And in Greek, and in Greek, that's a different word for power than the first word. The first word is like uh, dunamis; it means latent power. There's potential power is there. So God, in his character, God in his person, he has so much power, infinite power. But when he releases that power, and there's an impact, there's a result, that is the work that's talking about here. The energy and the effective impact of God's power. 
بدونی که خداوند خدا انرژی که در وجودش هست بی نهایت است اما وقتی که این انرژی آزاد میشه میاد میخوره در اونجا این آزادی انرژی برای خودش یک عملی انجام میده یک واکنش رو انجام میده so it means that our emotions something can come and impact our emotions and all of a sudden we start feeling maybe jealousy or anger or we feel sad or fear or rejection we feel these emotions in our heart something comes and impacts our heart Ephesians 2 verse 2. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 2. I'll read this one other verse. And while you're finding it, I'll read it. It says, in which you used to live, that is, uh, in our sins, in which you used to live when you follow the ways of this world and the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. شما وقت رفتار می نمیدید بر حسب دوره این جهان بر وفق رئیس قدرت هوا یعنی آن روحی که الهال در فرزندان معصیت عمل می کنید so there's the same word work یعنی همون لغت کار کردن هست we saw in the first verse it says that something can come into our hearts and it works inside our hearts and our emotions to have an impact and it can jerk our emotions around us, can stir our emotions up. And now we see in this verse that Satan is talking again about the impact, something that comes and influences our emotions. And we see in this verse, Satan is the one who does that. در واقع ما رو به سمت بعدی میبره شیطان هست so in this verse it says the ruler of the kingdom of the air میبینید اینجا گفته میشه که رئیس قدرت هوا هوای نفس and as we read through Ephesians and we read Ephesians chapter 6 10 through 20 earlier we see that that ruler is Satan و وقتی ما که داری که اپوسیسیان میکنیم میبینیم که این فهمان روای تاریکی همان شیطان هست so Satan used to be living in heaven. His name was Lucifer. He was beautiful. He led one third of the angels to rebel against God. So God reached out with his hand. He grabbed Satan and all those angels which rebelled against him and became demons. He cast them out of heaven and he, they have to stay now around earth, around the atmosphere of earth. They cannot go all over the universe. So that's who we see is the ruler of the kingdom of the earth, that is Satan, and the spirit who is now at work, those who are disobedient, that spirit, this is the attitude, the influence that the Satan brings, the demons bring when they're attacking us, when they're tempting us. They're trying to go inside our mind and in our, our heart and our emotions and stir them up. Even he'll come from behind and like with a knife, like stab us in the back to attack us. <laughs> قدرتی اون که داره میاد به ما حمله میکنه و دائم ماها رو تحت تاثیر نیروی خودش قرار میده و مثل کسی میونه که از پشت با خنجر به ما حمله میکنه. So let's look at a couple of more verses. Um, Second Thessalonians chapter 2 verses 9 and 10. And again we're thinking of this word, this word for work, the the effective working of evil, the influence that it has. Second Thessalonians 2 verses 9 and 10. So here is talking about uh, the end times. 
And it speaks about this lawless one, this man who leads the people of the world in rebellion against God in the church. And it says here that this lawless one, it will be at the time with the work of Satan displayed in all kinds of false miracles and signs and wonders. And in verse 10, every sort of evil that deceives those who are perishing. So there's four things that Satan Satan does. As we new charge, he says that Satan and John did. First, he has false miracles. And there's three different types of words that are used for these things. There's there's false miracles. And signs and wonders. And the fourth thing, which is in chapter uh, verse 10, it says he is deceitful. Unrighteous deceitfulness. And if we look at that word, unrighteous deceitfulness, through the New Testament, we see that it that there's different ways that he deceives. One is through false messages, through lies. So how many false messages, how many false lies do we see in the world? Can we think of a few? Islam. Islam has. Hinduism, yes. Hinduism, Buddhist, Buddhist, Sikh, Sikh, Jain, Jainism, Jainism, Atheism. I mean, the Khudai, but so we see that Satan has many false lies. It's like the demons got together and they formed committees, and each one came up with a lie, and then they're going out and spreading all kinds of false truths amongst the people. <laughs> So we see the evidence of that in our culture all around us here in Canada. And so they have a false wisdom which says, well, that's just true for you, but it's not true for me. You have your path to God, I have my path to God, and we can get along. And that's trying to stop the church from speaking the truth. The next part of is the false messages, but also inflamed passions, emotions. So it affects our mind, but it also can affect our heart. Satan's deceitfulness can affect our heart. And so we see, for instance, one in one place it talks about a passion for wealth. And their craving, their heart's desire, is to have more and more money and more and more money. And there's uh, so that one's one is a uh, passion for money, a desire for money. The other one is immoral thoughts, lusts inside the heart. And then a rebellious attitude where it just rejects all authority. And I can think, wow, in the past, was authority, were they kind to me? Was authority caring for me? Did they uh, show compassion to me? 
Why should I listen to any authority? And so we can rebel against that. And Satan, he gets the victory this way by God on godless, hateful authority, and then also rebellion, even against the good things as a reaction. همونطور که میگه که به ما بگه نه تو لازم نیست اطاعت بکنی از قانون و دولت که هم به همین شکل چون ما رو به شکل به این شکل نسبت به خدا هم سرکش میکنیم I want to think about you and I personally, ourselves Satan will come and he will attack you and your emotions and your mind he will try to stop you from following Jesus he will try to bring division in relationships he will do anything he can to stop you from following the Lord and to hinder us in doing our ministry. And he has thousands of years of practice. So, as we're coming to the end here, let me just share one example from my life. When I was young, young child growing up, my mother shamed me. She belittled me. Sorry. She belittled me, made me feel little, small, worthless. She rejected me. So she had some good qualities, but she had also some problems. And so how did that affect me growing up? I had those hurts, the brokenness inside. How did that affect me growing up? In my mind, I believed lies. I had emotional hurts, but I also believed in some lies. I thought I'm worthless. That I'm not worthy of someone really loving me. And so here I could I came to Christ, I was 20 years old, but still I had these hurts inside. Still I had these false thinking in my mind, at least sometimes. But as I was growing in my walk with Jesus, I learned that you and I as men and as women, we are being trained by God as warriors against these lies from Satan, and God can heal us in our hearts, the brokenness that's there. And one of the ways in which I could be affected by Satan, so Satan knows that I have these hurts. Somehow he can figure out, he can understand that I'm believing in some wrong things, that I have these hurts in my heart. And then he comes and he attacks me in those areas of weakness. So maybe I'm part of the church. I'm going to church, I'm studying the Bible, I'm growing in the Lord. And then somebody does something to me and I feel rejected. Yeah. Maybe that person didn't need it. Or they say something and I feel worthless. How come he said something nice about this person, but he didn't say anything nice about me? Oh, I'm worthless. I'm nothing. So Satan is attacking me in my areas of brokenness and in the false things that I'm believing in. So I'm going to tell you just very briefly the pathway to wholeness that God led me on in my life. And 
I thought I've read the Bible and I am to forgive. And so I went through a period of process, even over periods of months and years teaching, and I went through and made a list of all the things my mother hurt me. Every word that I could remember, every action that she did. I had a whole page, so many lines, all these things I could remember from childhood, crying myself to sleep at night. And so I, I took one item, and sometimes with my friends I would share, and then I'd spend half an hour, one hour praying, and I would just pray, and I'd say, I'm there at the cross, and Jesus is saying, Randy, just give me your hurts. Help me, God. I say, Lord, lift this burden from my heart. Help me to forgive that person, my mother. So I had to forgive her for the things that she did that hurt me. I had to forgive her also for the things that she withheld from me, the love that she should have shown towards me. I had to forgive her for that. And I had to forgive her for the things that I saw her do to others that hurt other people. God freed me from those hurts. He brought healing to my heart. So I was shafadot. And love her and listen to her and be at peace in my heart. And even if she does something, that could, in the past, have felt like rejection and worthlessness. No, I'm free from that. God has freed me through the process of forgiveness. So I want to pray with you now. I'm just going to take a couple of minutes. We're going to listen to the Holy Spirit speak to us. And as we're praying, I'm just going to ask God, maybe there's a person that God will bring to your mind. Maybe it's from your childhood, from your family. Maybe it's something more recent. And I'm going to do is I'm going to pray that God would help you to commit yourself to working through a process of forgiveness. Maybe you need to go home and make your list, and then with the pastor, with someone else, a close friend, you need to start praying one step at a time through those things, read through the scriptures, and the Holy Spirit help you just to lift that burden off your heart and to bring healing and forgiveness. Father God, we're going to stand before you now. We come before you, Lord Jesus. And we ask, Father, the Holy Spirit to speak to us. Lord, that, you would, that there's someone that you wanted to bring to mind in each one of those or those here, Lord God, that you want now to speak to, if there's someone that they need to forgive. Maybe there's some deep wound, Lord. They've been hurt, they've been abused. They've been shamed or made worthless. You know that these are lies from Satan. But I pray, Father, now that if you're bringing someone to mind, that my brothers and my sisters would have courage. To embrace this, this
this situation, Lord. And even though with tears and crying and pain, to make a list of all the hurts that they suffered. I'm praying, Father, that they would now commit themselves to working through that, each one of those items, for forgiveness. If some of you have thought of someone or some situation, where you need to offer forgiveness, Will you ask God now to give you the courage to work through that? Don't run away. Don't try to pretend it didn't happen. But work through forgiveness for those hurts, those things that were done to you. Lord, I pray that you would empower my brothers and sisters, that they would be able to have the courage to work through and forgive, Lord God, whatever happened to them in the past. Maybe one person, maybe ten people, and they have to make their list. They have to pray through each item, God, that Satan would not have any hold of them. He wouldn't be able to hurt them, God, but they would be free from those things. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. <laughs> این اشخاصی رو این از همین این نام هایی که و این شرایطی به تو زد و قلب و معرب رو بایی رو دونه به دونه رو به تو قول بدیم که بیاییم و تو با آقا کار رو کنیم که دونه اونها رو به دونه به دونه اونها رو با قدرت توی خدا من ببخشیم که آزاد میشیم و شفا بده بکنیم و بتونیم خدا من رو با تو اون تو که تو بیخوای راه بیم امین های در نام ایسای مسیح خدا من آمین